In this video, we'll develop something incredibly powerful, the Gibbs Free Energy. And we're going to use this to basically act as a traffic light to tell us, can a reaction go or is it impossible? We won't focus too much on the free energy part, but free energy is not like free beer. Yum, yum. It is like free speech. So you're allowed to use the energy um, to do whatever you like with. In fact, not all the energy is free, just like, you know, when you take home money from a paycheck, you're not free to spend all of it. I mean, I guess you could, but you'd probably be kicked out of your house because some of it you have to pay rent and bills, utilities, internet, food, whatever it may be. So that's the idea of Gibbs free energy. It's the amount of energy you're free to do stuff with, but uh, you still have to pay an entropy tax, so you can't spend all of it. So let's go back to the first law. Actually, no, let's go back to the second law. And uh, by the way, Gibbs was a thermodynamicist who uh, lived in New England and published some fundamental papers on these. And these were pro these were published in very obscure journals. And they weren't really rediscovered till about 50 years later when most of the thermodynamicists of Europe were trying to figure this stuff out. And they thought they'd come across something brand new. And lo and behold, they looked and this guy had figured it all out a long time ago. However, he published it in an obscure journal. Most people didn't understand the language. He was a mathematician, and the language he used was really obscure for most practicing chemists and physicists at the time. So too bad, but pretty interesting guy. That's all I'll say about Gibbs. So we know that the criteria for something happening spontaneously is the entropy of the universe has to go up. And we've seen in thermodynamics that we divide the universe into two portions, the reaction and its surroundings. And so all we have to do is ensure that both of those add up to something bigger than zero. Delta S for the reaction, uh, we'll often just go ahead and write delta S. And delta S for the surroundings, well, anything that's not the chemical reaction, I suppose we should write down what exactly it is. Alrighty, so in the last video, we went ahead and we saw that delta S of surroundings is actually equal to minus oops, let me get rid of that positive there, it's equal to minus delta H for the reaction over T. So notice now that we are using symbols that all refer to the chemical reaction. So this is the entropy of the reaction change, this is the entropy change or the enthalpy change for the reaction, and this is the temperature of the reaction. We're going to be at constant temperature conditions here, so the system and the surroundings are going to be exactly the same temperature. We are also assuming that we're under conditions of constant pressure. All right, so this is our criteria for whether something can happen spontaneously. So if this is less than zero, what this means is that we can talk about it, but it will never actually happen. So if it's greater than zero, then that means that it is thermodynamically allowed. And thermodynamically allowed is the best kind of allowed because if thermodynamics disallows, it ain't going to happen. In fact, it's impossible to happen. In fact, we are so sure that the second law cannot be violated, the U.S. Patent Office will refuse to look at any invention that claims to do so. All right, let's multiply this by minus T. And remember that the thermodynamic temperature is always positive. So if we multiply by minus T, we will flip the sign. And that allows us to rewrite this equation as delta H minus T delta S is always less than or equal to zero. In fact, we might want to go ahead now and redefine something. So we're going to define the Gibbs energy, G, as H minus T S. And we can calculate the change in Gibbs free energy. And it's just going to be the change in enthalpy minus, actually, if we keep temperature constant, it won't change. So it'll be just that times by the change in entropy. So this is the change in Gibbs energy. Since Gibbs was a person, I suppose we should capitalize his name. That would only be fair now, wouldn't it? And uh, ah, OK, no, did you notice why we did that? Because now this thing here is this thing here. So another way to rewrite this is essentially something can happen as long as the Gibbs free energy change is negative. So notice this is almost the inverse of this one here, right? This one says entropy has to keep going up for the universe. This one says that the Gibbs energy change has to keep going down. But all it really is is that we've multiplied by minus T, so what goes up now has to go down. We think about this, and uh, this makes a lot more intuitive sense to us because we know balls roll downhill. We know that what comes up must go down. We know that things tend to fall down, leaves fall off of trees. They don't tend to float up into outer space. And so we're used to thinking about energy changes decreasing. And um, so this kind of fits our, our view of the world. 